Hey, what's up? I'm Andy and I'm a software developer. I've been a software developer for about three years now and I'm actually a self-taught programmer. And I was hoping that I could maybe share my story with someone else out there who may be going down that path or thinking of going down that path. And it's totally something that I think anyone can do, but you know, maybe my share, my experience will help you get where you wanna go. So let's start at the very beginning. Uh, 2014, so this is three years ago now at this point. This is early 2014, so it's almost four years. Oh my God, yeah, wow, it's four years. Uh, I was actually a car salesman, totally random for me. I, I'd really just worked random on jo odd jobs my whole life, but I decided to be a car salesman. I figured the sales experience would be good and it would definitely take me out of my comfort zone. So I was doing car sales for about a year at this point, uh, early 2014, and car sales is tough, but not only that, it just not really doesn't really fit my personality. I'm kind of a nerd. I uh, think way too much. I uh, have a hard time selling cars just in general. So I decided, you know, this, this wasn't for me, but uh, I didn't really have a way out. I didn't really, I didn't really, couldn't really think of a career that I could get into or something I could do outside of car sales. So of course, as fate would have it, uh, I was having a beer with a friend on a Friday night. We were about to go out, we were having a beer at his place and he just sort of casually mentioned to me, he said, hey, have you ever thought about being a software developer? And I said, no, there's no way. Like I sort of assumed that, Software developers are really well educated, good at math, and I don't know, just you have to be super duper nerdy or something like that. And he said, no, no, not at all. He said, I think you could be a really good software developer if that's what you're, if that's something that you're interested in. So, you know, I said, okay, well, what's the best route to get there? Like I had no idea how to teach yourself, uh, how to teach yourself to be a software developer. And he recommended a book called JavaScript, uh, Head First JavaScript. Head First is a series by I think O'Reilly, but Anyhow, it's a, it's a really good book and uh, he recommended that to me and I, I said, okay, cool. And I, I, I went home that night and I started thinking about this and thinking about how good, you know, software developers have it in terms of job security and salary. So I was like, you know, this, this could be something I'm, I could really do well in, Who's, who knows? So uh, I eventually started reading the book and loving it. Like I dug into it like nothing I've ever really dug into before. I started doing all the activities uh, and I eventually finished the book in about a month and then I, you know, at that point I realized like this is something I really like. So I reached back out to my friend, told him what the deal was and he said, cool, next step is to create a portfolio of applications that you can show off to a potential uh, employer at, at whenever you decide to do that. So he said, just pick whatever you want, don't be picky. And so I picked, um, I think it was, uh, actually I know what it was, it was a Tetris uh, that was completely built in JavaScript. And that actually was really fun. It, it, it took a lot of sort of creative thinking because I had no experience obviously in building an application. That was my first one. It was pretty intimidating in a lot of ways. So yeah, it took a lot of effort. It took three months. So it was the end of 2014 when I finished my Tetris JavaScript application and I decided, okay, you know, I still could create more apps, but what is the next best step for me to take in terms of really get momentum going and really uh, to make sure that I get a job when I decide I'm gonna start applying. And so what I decided to do was apply at DeVry, which is a funny term because I don't think you need to really, I think you need to have a pulse to get accepted at DeVry. Yeah, I know I'm talking shit, whatever. But uh, I decided to go back to, to school and uh, I figured it would really bolster my chances when I eventually decided to get, uh, or decide to apply at different jobs. And you know, I, I don't know if that was the right decision. In hindsight, I would probably make a different decision. Getting yourself into a lot of debt is not necessarily the smartest thing, but I did it and obviously it kind of all worked out in the end. So fall 2014, I'm going to school, I'm working on the on apps on the side, I'm still watching tutorial videos. So I'm basically, my whole life is filled with this and I'm being pretty disciplined about every single day making sure I'm doing something. And then Christmas comes in 2014 and I've made, I think at this time maybe I have like four apps in my portfolio, you know, school's humming along, although it's not really helpful. School is, it was, DeVry was like five or 10 years behind the, the coding and the programming stuff that they were teaching. And honestly, I was learning way more just off of, off of the tutorials that you can find easily on the internet, like YouTube or just people's, people's web pages. So I just sort of felt at this point with the applications that I had built with the, the, you know, the four applications in my portfolio with school going along, I was like Christmas time, I just felt like it was right. And I decided, you know what, I'm gonna start applying for jobs. There's really nothing else I can do. I can, can't really study JavaScript any more than I've studied it. So what I did is I created a resume, a very stock resume. I actually put work experience that had no relation to any IT job because I had no IT uh, experience. I put like Starbucks and obviously my car sales and I think I worked at a restaurant at some point too. 
and I shopped that out to like 30 or 40 different employers. I remember I had a spreadsheet because I was keeping track and I didn't get a single response back from any of them. It was pretty disheartening because without, I, f I really felt strongly that without being able to mark down that I had graduated school and the fact that I had no experience, that I wasn't really gonna get anywhere with just throwing on my resume to every single company that I could. So I actually reached back to, out to my friend who I, I really consider a mentor at this point, really helping me along in the process. He, what he said to do is scrap your resume, don't put that, that, that work experience stuff on there. What he said was, is make a really cool bio, explain why you're passionate about coding, really stress that the importance of that. Instead of putting your work experience, what he said to do is put your applications. So list all of your applications, list the programming languages you use, list anything. If you learned something from it, if you liked it, whatever. Just put, just focus on your applications. And then for school, don't put down that you didn't graduate, just put down the year that you're currently studying in and then put your GPA because it kind of makes it look like you graduated even though you haven't. I know, a little tricky, but you know, again, like do whatever you can to get yourself in front of an interviewer, right? Like that's, that, was, that was my goal at this point. So I remember shot that out to a few places, not a lot, that new resume was just, just to a few places. And I actually got a call the next day and it was from a recruiter. And the recruiter said, look, I like your resume. It looks really interesting. I may have a company that would be interested in you. So she ended up setting me up with a company. I went in for the interview. I tried to be as upbeat and positive as I could. I tried to make it sound like, you know, like I would mop the floors if need be. Like I, I had that sort of mentality uh, going into it. And then one of the biggest things that I, I remember, uh, remember about the interview is that I tr I really focused on not oversharing any of my weaknesses because I think they asked me about SQL specifically because they, they wanted somebody who had some, just some SQL experience. And I told them honestly, I said, uh, I don't think I said it had never worked in it, but I said, you know, I've read some books on it. I've, I understand the basics of it. I understand certain principles, but I did not tell them that I didn't have any experience in SQL because I felt like that really didn't matter. Like I could learn it if I wanted to. So. Things ended up working out. They ended up hiring me, putting me on a three month sort of contract, short term contract and, and said to me, look, if everything works out, if you, if, you, if you work out, we'll keep you. Otherwise we can both walk away. But that obviously didn't end up happening. Uh, I like working there. It, I worked there for about, I guess a year and a half, two years. And I'm here now. <laughs> so there's a few takeaways from my story that I think are worth reiterating. The first one being, I think if you're gonna teach yourself, it's really important to have a sort of timeline of when you're gonna start applying to different jobs. So I don't remember if I specifically said a year from now I was gonna start applying for jobs, but I definitely wanted, it. There was, a, there was a definite date in the future. Like I wasn't gonna wait five years, I was gonna start whenever I felt well, I was ready. I highly recommend that you set a target date for yourself of when you're gonna start applying for those jobs. So that way, and the reason I say that is because that way you have a plan of action that you can do on a monthly, weekly, and daily basis to get yourself there. So if you say, I want, if you wanna just go ahead and recreate what I did, you can say, I wanna have a portfolio of four applications in whatever programming languages you want. And then you say, if I study 20 minutes a day, once you complete those, that sort of, those objectives, then you can basically say to yourself, I'm ready to, to go out there and apply, if you, if you feel ready. One of the mistakes I think some people make when they do this is that they sort of not, they don't really have a target date in mind and that day can stretch out to years and years and years. All of a sudden, five years into this, you're teaching yourself how to program, but there's no sort of sense of urgency to actually get the job in a software development role. Now, the second thing I think you should really consider is school. When I say consider, I mean you should really think hard about whether you want to go to school or not. In hindsight, I really don't think that I would go back to school or I would have gone back to school, but that's the decision you're gonna have to make. The software development field is a big field. There's so many different things you can do in it. You can do cryptography, you can do C++, you can do JavaScript front end stuff. So you should really take the time to consider whether school is right for you. But with that being said, getting yourself into 50,000, $100,000 worth of debt just for something that you can do on your own, you know, you can teach yourself to code on your own. The internet has so much information now that it's school is really not required. Now, you should be well aware that when you go to apply to jobs, you may not even get to an inbox. You may be 
just sort of filtered out by a lot of these job uh, sites because you don't put down an, a formal education and obviously no work experience doesn't help either. You may be funneled off into the garbage bin. So it's really something you should consider, but definitely take the time to consider it. Don't just do it thinking that school is automatically going to make you a programmer or that it's going to give you a leg up in getting a job to start with. And the third thing I'd really point out is that my, I think that second version of my resume was super helpful in actually getting the job. It's a good idea since you're probably not going to have experience in a technical field, or I should say in, a, in an IT field, it's really important to, to put something there that, that, that makes someone sort of go down the page and, and focus on it. And if you put your projects there, you're more likely to catch their attention and they're less likely to focus on the fact that you have no IT experience. If you have open source project experience, so if you, if you work on an open source project, put that on there like anything to show that these these people these potential employers that you're serious about what you're doing you like what you're doing and you spend a lot of time in this area and then take that bio and put something about yourself that's kind of personal but make sure you stress the fact that you're super passionate about this because that's what they want like I, I just know that employers want somebody who's passionate who's going to work hard that's all you really got to do but you're not going to win if you're just throwing out the same old resume that everyone else is and you don't have any experience so that's something I would highly recommend doing if you're if you're about to apply. And the last thing I'd say is definitely just work hard and be disciplined. Like there's no other way that this is gonna happen. Like there's no other way you're gonna go from not knowing how to program to program unless you're methodical, unless you're disciplined, unless you can stick to your sort of daily and weekly commitments. Like there's just no other way to do it. If you do that, you're you're just increasing the luck because this is a lot. Of, there's a lot of luck involved. Like I was very lucky to find find that perfect situation. But if you do those things, you're just increasing your luck. To, to get a job when you do decide to go out there and get a job. So good luck if you're, if you're in this position that I was. I definitely think that's more possible than you realize. I hope that just by me telling you this, it sort of, it sort of sinks in. Uh, but other than that, uh, if you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like. Uh, please comment. If you didn't like the video, leave a constructive criticism, that'd be nice. <laughs> uh, and go ahead and click the subscribe button if you really want. I, I'm trying to post a lot of tech videos. Uh, cryptocurrency related videos and also an occasional fitness and nutrition video because I think those are that's a very interesting field. Thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you soon.